Recently there's been a Google event and few of the next Nexus devices have been presented. But what if you're not that fanboy always willing to have the latest and greatest and just want to have an affordable tablet with high specs and performance? Nexus 9 might be your choice. Greetings to you my friends and fellow YouTubers, this is Daraj from Daraj Tech and this is Nexus 9. guys we'll start with an unboxing and first of all I must say that the box looks really beautiful it's quite lightweight and um, when we open the box what greets us is the tablet itself with a nice made cover um, it's easy to take it off from the box um, to get it off from here you can simply slide it from this plastic cover and here is the tablet and as for the packing um, it's actually not much it's just uh, the instructions with Nexus 9 and uh, like the, the uh, user manuals that you can see over here some warranty plus safety manual but who needs those actually uh, then we can see the AC adapter well it's the UK version I have my own um, adapter so I don't really mind and we have the the cable itself let's try to take it off um, the cable is of good quality I would say and it's quite long The philosophy behind all the Nexus devices is having a pure Google experience with the latest updates. It's like having an iPad but with Android for the new version of Android would come to this series of devices first. HTC is arguably the best Android phone manufacturer. Some are liking the Sense launcher but everyone is definitely praising the build quality. Is the situation the same with Nexus 9? Let's find out. Let's start with the build quality. The back cover is not detachable and is made out of plastic. It's a soft touch plastic, the metal can be seen on the sides. Plastic here is gathering fingerprints and smudges like a beast. The buttons are clicky enough, but nothing special. The screen is covered by Gorilla Glass 3 with an oleophobic coating. On the right side, you can see the power on and off button and the volume rocker. The left side is left empty. The headphones and microphone combined jack is at the top and micro USB port can be seen at the bottom. The dimensions are height 228.2 mm, a width 153.7 and it's only 8 mm thick. It weighs only 425 grams if it's a Wi-Fi version and 436 grams if it's a 3G LTE. Its size and weight provide you with the possibility to wield it for a long time. It's convenient overall and pleasant to use. What is definitely showing as the HTC origin of this laptop is the speakers. They are bassy and clear, but most of all they are front-headed, so you won't cover them accidentally while playing games or watching videos. They are not as loud as, let's say, HTC M9, but definitely one of the best speakers on the tablets nowadays. There are two speakers on the top and the bottom, and therefore provides you with the true stereo surrounding experience. Another thing that is common for the HTC phones is the high quality screen. This one is LCD and as the name indicates it's 9 inches, well 8.9 if to be precise, and the resolution is 2048 by 1536 with a PPI of 287.64. The screen is good, the viewing angles are decent, the colors are vibrant, maybe a bit too warm for my taste. But brightness is good for the indoors, but a bit behind in the outdoors. For some it's not a problem as we're spending mostly over 20 hours indoors, but it's still worth mentioning. Worth noting that this screen is having the iPad-ish 4 to 3 aspect ratio and when most of the games run well on it due to proper scaling, on YouTube this kind of resolution might result in losing some of the useful space when watching videos. As you can see the black stripes are seen above and below the picture. Nevertheless, the media consumption of this tablet is pleasant overall thanks to the high-res display and stereo speakers. 
As for the horsepower under the hood, you're looking at one among few tablets with the Tegra K1, a dual-core 64-bit processor clocked at 2.3 GHz, that gives it a very high benchmark test and day-to-day -day usage experience. Here you can see the test and if it's not the best mobile CPU nowadays, it's close to that. And Tutu shows us the following result. It has 2GB of RAM, which is nothing to surprise with nowadays. Video is processed by Kepler DX1 GPU. 3D Max shows us the following result. When combined with Android Lollipop or Marshmallow that both support the 64-bit architecture, you might think that it flies, and it absolutely does. But some apps are, that are not optimized for 64-bit sometimes are a bit too slow. But hopefully optimization will come eventually as most of the mobile devices are heading towards the 64-bit. As for storage, you have two options of 16 and 32 gigabytes on board. The quantity of memory available and the unavailability of SD card expansion slot might bother some, but I think it's no fun to store all of your data on a tablet. Overall, it is fantastic in terms of gaming. Everything runs smoothly, especially the Nvidia optimized games. But the heating is seen when playing for a long time, like after 30 minutes or so. Camera. If you're still that person using tablet for photos, well, stop. But anyways, this is not a tablet that you would normally take your pictures with, even though it features an 8 megapixel sensor with an LED flash. The photos are okay on the outside, the color reproduction is okay as well, sometimes you can even get enough of details, but when it comes to indoors, they kinda suck, especially in low lights. Plus, the stock Google camera app is definitely not getting the customer preferences winning award. The front camera is 1.6 megapixel shooter with 720p video capture capabilities, but you still cannot expect any miracle of it, it's not that kind of selfie camera seen on many smartphones these days, but it does a job and is definitely enough for Skype and video calls in general. Battery. It's a 6700 mAh built-in battery, non-removable as mostly seen nowadays. It's enough for the whole day of normal usage and if you're not a heavy gamer it can last you for two days. In general I must say that the experience is pleasant overall. This tablet is definitely for you if you're willing to have the latest Android on your tablet and if you do enjoy playing games on your tablet. Oh, and it's for you if you don't really care about that heavily unoptimized for YouTube and Netflix screen aspect ratio. Besides, the price is okay as well. It's 3 to 4 and a half hundred euros here and the same amount of dollars in the US. Therefore, my verdict is yes, I definitely recommend this device. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is the best device right there on the market and I'm not comparing it to iPad or anything else. I'm just saying that it's decent and it's worth the price. And what is your verdict? I want to know in terms of the device itself and in terms of the video that you have just watched. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and thumbs down if you dislike the video. Uh, leave your comments down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It was The Rush with The Rush Tech. I wish you all the best. Keep it positive and cheers. I'll see you in the next one.